Hello, welcome to another part of Defense Tools. In this part, we're going to tackle the corner parts. So in previous video, we made the setup, so we mainly talked about here adding models on these lines. So that was already been placed there. Let's go to the next step and create the corners. And also importantly for this stage, you also then need a model uh, like I have here. So you can use you can use like a placeholder cube or something like that, but if you already have a basic fence model, uh, you can already use that as well. So here uh, we're going to go to the split node where we split it out those different parts and we're now going to grab that other uh, output here. And I'm going to grab it and immediately uh, use a fuse node. So the fuse node is mainly here because if the corner pieces would uh, connect with each other, we then actually fuse them together into one big corner part. Then once we do the fusing node, I now want to merge the primitives back together. So we created now these individual primitives, but we want to make it back and that we can do with a polypath node. So with this node, you can see we will just now convert this into like one single consistent line. Uh, we can also do a resample here in case that it's needed. So since the beveling amount, uh, I set the beveling amount to pretty high value. So we can say it's not necessarily needed, but definitely in case there might be unexpected inputs, uh, a resample could be useful here to have like a more consistency uh, in, in, in poly count. Uh, we can also here go and treat polygons as subdivision. So in this case, it will not do much. But again, in case you have like a weird input or a very large corner, that might be useful to then to have a bit more smoothed out version of that. So I will now quickly show you what we're going to do and how it's going to work. And then I will add some improvements on that setup. So I want to then use actually the chain node uh, to use now. So the chain node is like it's sort of in its name. So it will chain a certain geometry over a curve. So I have a curve and I'm going to grab my geometry here and place it over here. So it's just like the basic fence. And I want to then use this as input and my curve here as well. So let's see what that would give us. So probably by default, it will look like a bit weird like this. And that is for example here, because it will not take the full model, but it will take like separate parts of the model and scatter them on the line. So we want to say that we find pieces not based on connectivity, but by attribute. So in that stage, it will just like you could see here, it will just take the whole, uh, it will just take the whole model and displace it over the curve. There might be other settings you want to tweak. So in this case, it's actually already working pretty well. And in some cases, we might want to, for example, here tweak those two settings. Uh, so if I view my curve here, you can see it's like not just uh, touching the end here. So it's like a little bit left over and with this mapping here we can actually tweak that a little bit so because as you can see here now we are like pushing that over the whole uh, curve length and it's the same here for this one as well so it might be useful to sometimes use the fraction geo length here uh, so that might have like some little influence or, or some larger influences so that looks a bit better and we're going to also go into the alignment and by default, it will actually center the geometry, but I don't want that. I always want sort of like the pivot points at the bottom. Uh, so we're just like displacing this on the bottom. So if I would merge the results together, just to like temporarily see what we have. So merge uh, this one and this one. So we now have something like this. And as you can see, like this is already working pretty well. Uh, so we have a corner that is customly made in this spot. So the only issue that I sometimes would have, and I'm going to go in a bit deeper with that, is that we are not always aligning this properly. Uh, and especially if we're going to go back to our curve, and let's say we are grabbing, for example, a point here, make sure you are in editing mode. And let's say I'm dragging this down. Uh, and at this stage, this is where my current setup is not really good at. It's aligning these uh, together. So if I grab this here, so it's like an angled version, we are not aligning this properly. So I want to take care of that and uh, tweak those values better. So here with the chain note, I want to make sure that we are actually a bit more uh, centered here. And one way of doing that is, again, using the audience 
uh, along curve. So we want to make sure that we have a correct orientation. So with this node, we can fix some of that orientation. Uh, so you already saw like we are rotating our model in the wrong position. So let's tweak some of the values here. So first of all, I want to say that the up vector is the Y axis. I also want to enable this toggle here, use and target, use target and up vector. So you can see like this already also makes a difference there. So that's already good. And it might also be useful to maybe go into the rotations, but in this case, it's actually rotated correctly. But again, if you want to rotate it in some certain way, uh, you can play around that here. But in this case, it's actually not needed to have that. So know that, but yeah, know that you can play around with that. So let's see how much this is improving already. So you can see that this is already doing a lot. So we have an almost perfect result. The only thing here is that at the ends, it might not fully connect uh, always. It might seem like there's a little gaps. So there is a way of like uh, making this a bit better. So we'll make a small system to tweak that. And we can use some of the tension types here. So if we change the tension type, we will have some differences. So by default, you might not notice the difference directly. And specifically for our case, we want to enable extrapolate on end tensions. So because this issue happens always at the end, so we want to enable this toggle. And you will see that there will be uh, some improvements here by just already enabling the toggle. Now, if we also now switch to, for example, like previous edge or next edge, we can see that this definitely helps a bit more. So this is now being perfectly uh, fitting here. Now, what happens now on the other side is that this is not aligning anymore. So if we switch then to previous edge, this is now aligning correctly. So I need to make a small system that blends between uh, the previous edge and the next edge to just to align those two nicely together. What I will do is I will make two of the nodes here. So one will be here uh, set to next edge and one will be here set to previous edge. And then I want to figure out how I can sort of like blend those values together to have like a better uh, end result. Now, what I want to do as blending value is I'm going to use uh, a loop actually. So I'm going to loop over all the pieces separately. So we're going to say loop over connected pieces. So we have that. So we have that here. And in the loop, now I can go over one single piece. I want to measure uh, the distance. So distance along uh, geometry here. So with this node, we can measure how long it is. So we can then use that as a zero to one range. To use this node here on a curve, we have to define a starting point, which will be point zero. So start measuring from point zero. We have a edge, so we don't actually have a real surface. I'm going to just switch this to edge. I'm going to now calculate a mask value, and we're going to calculate as far as our geometry is. So we're going to calculate from all the way down here to all the way at the end. So you can already see like this red color. So we're going to start at from zero to one. So this will be like the full range of that. Uh, you can also go here to the attributes and you can see that we have a mask going from one uh, to zero here. So we have now those values in place. And we're just going to do a loop. So we will loop over each single line. So in this case, we have like two of them. And I want to then reorder this here. So we are calculating that here. That won't make a difference. And we then want to blend those together with a wrangle. So I'm going to grab a wrangle here. We're going to call this, for example, like blending. So what are the values that we need to blend? So we need to blend the normal and the up vector. Here in our orientation nodes, we can see that we are outputting up vector and the normal. So those are the two values to blend. Before I can blend them, I also need to get the information from the nodes, especially from this node. So I'm going to type in vector. I'm going to call this normal two. This is equal to getting the point value of my uh, second of my first input, which is actually referencing this one here. So this is input zero, and this is then input one. So we're gonna say get uh, information of input one. Then what, what do we want to get is we want to get the normal, so the N, and we want to get that at the current point number. And now I basically want to copy this, and we want to do the same then for the up vector. So we want to say get up vector two. So up two, we want to get here the value up, and then we have that. 
So we are directly trying to get information of this node here. And now for blending them together, uh, we can use a lerp. So if you've worked, for example, with Unreal, uh, you can also use the lerps and materials. So that's quite similar there. So we're going to overwrite the normal. So add normal is now equal to lerping uh, between uh, my current normal and uh, the new normal, so normal 2. And the lerp value is then actually the mask I created in the loop there. So this is a sort of, so this is my lerping value uh, to either be 0 or 1. And again, we are going to just copy this and we're going to replace this. So we're going to say we want to overwrite my up vector and this new up vector is a lerp between my current up versus the other up vector. And let's now plug that in over here in that system. And let's see how well that works. And you can see that we are now seeing a, a really, and you can see that we are now seeing an improvement there. So if I would not do this wrangle, um, you can see that we here have like a slight rotation there. Like it's very minimal, but if you want it to be like a bit perfect, then this is like the way to go. There are of course other ways on how you can try to calculate this. Uh, but this is, for example, heavily using the orient along curve node and then hit blending the values. So we have that all in place. So our fence tool is basically now done. So we have like a quite uh, unique system here where I can just now grab my curve and I can cover any different angle that I want. So in case we want to certainly go up, uh, we can go up and our uh, geometry is still following nicely. If you, for example, would not care about having instances of doing instancing, you can just plug in the chain node directly after the bevel in here. And you can just have like the same result. But of course, this will be like a higher poly count. Uh, so we are quickly going up into the into the tens and the thousands of polygons um, compared to just like in, if we instancing, if you are starting to instance models, of course, that will be cheaper. Uh, so I can just here also click instance. Um, so that will be better. So that's why I'm doing this instancing step. That was it for this video. So our main system is fully in place. It works like expected. So we can draw a curve and have fences generated on that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.